Hey friends, welcome back. In today's show, we're going to talk more about GLP-1 agonists and the drug known as Ozempic that is getting a lot of media attention right now because of its induction of stomach paralysis. Now, this is a known contraindication or side effect associated with most of the GLP-1 agonists, including Ozempic and other compounds. And I think it's a really good time to talk about the mechanisms here about GLP-1 and talk about natural things that we can do to increase GLP-1 to induce satiety to help with visceral adipose tissue loss, to help improve metabolic regulation and insulin sensitivity. It turns out that GLP-1 is known as an incretin hormone that helps to improve post-meal processing of nutrients. And it does so by slowing down the rate of peristalsis and gastrointestinal motility. It does so uh, by helping to improve the release of pancreatic insulin. Uh, it also helps to improve satiety. But it turns out that when users of these, these GLP-1 agonists and when they're injecting these things on a, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, there are side effects that are emerging. So I want to highlight the natural ways that we can improve the functionality of GLP-1 and also improve uh, gut hormone release. So here was an article published in the New York Post. We took the trendy Ozempic to lose weight. Now our stomachs are paralyzed. Ozempic has been linked with a myriad of unwanted or unsightly side effects, such as, uh, such as excessive or putrid belching, diarrhea, and sagging skin. Again, more recently, patients reported that the Hollywood hailed drug triggered suicidal thoughts. Now, why might that be? Well, Ozempic has actually been studied and GLP-1 agonists have been shown to actually affect people uh, with addictions and the like, because it turns out that GLP-1 doesn't just impact the stomach. It impacts the brain. It impacts the potential amygdala, uh, the hypothalamus, where we think about uh, satiety and craving foods and the like. So this is a systemic effect, which is why I would like to continue to dive into this and talk about natural things that we can do to improve these gut hormones. But before we do, friends, as always, I just want to say thank you for being here. Appreciate you hitting that like button on this live show. We're going to continue to dive into the science and natural ways that you can improve the metabolic function of your gut that can help you feel more satiated, uh, cut some of those cravings, and also improve blood sugar regulation. So let's talk more about exercise. This is why exercise is so beneficial and why we should be promoting exercise as opposed to all of these uh, you know, different pharmacologic agents that have a litany of side effects. Uh, so GLP-1 and appetite responses to a meal in lean and overweight adolescents following exercise. So what you see here, this was in Nature Physiology, uh, sorry, Nature Integrated Physiology. And what you see here is changes in the GLP-1 levels after exercise, 30 to 60 minutes after exercise. And this might be why people who exercise generally have better appetite control, generally don't overeat, generally have better blood sugar regulation. So as you can see here, you have normal weight individuals before and after exercise. You get a, a significant increase in GLP-1 after exercise. But to no one's surprise, in the overweight category, uh, these are overweight subjects, you do see a lower GLP-1 level at baseline and a lower post-exercise increase in GLP-1. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that normal weight individuals generally have higher levels of GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1, okay? And so we can talk about other ways to increase uh, the, the baseline levels of that. But suffice it to say, part of the issue herein is when people binge eat or emotionally eat, they tend to have a down regulation of GLP-1 in these gut hormones. So this is where I think fasting really comes in as a viable alternative strategy to help to improve appetite sensing systems in the body, to help to improve satiety, to help to improve blood sugar regulation. So when we're overriding our natural satiety mechanisms by emotionally eating and binge eating, it's to no one's surprise that we have a down regulation in these critically important appetite sensing hormones. Now, along those lines, this was a very interesting study in the Journal of Obesity titled, Emotional eating is associated with increased brain responses to food cues and reduced sensitivity to GLP-1 receptor activation. Now, what this found is that people who binge eat and emotionally eat generally have a reduced activity and sensitivity to GLP-1. And that's why many people have been, you know, pharmacologic companies have been promoting Ozempec and other GLP-1-like uh, compounds, even Weight Watchers is promoting this, but we know these things have side effects. So this is really helpful to understand that we have natural strategies such as exercise, such as mindful eating, 
such as chewing your food, that can increase the levels naturally of GLP-1 and make you uh, ha- and have all of these physiologic benefits, including uh, uh, decreased liver fat, improved sensitivity of insulin, uh, increased musculoskeletal insulin sensitivity, decreased appetite, uh, uh, increased uh, uh, satiation, uh, decreased food intake, and the like. Because um, again, the reports are quite staggering. Uh, these are just anecdotal reports as of now, but this drug hasn't really been popularized for more than six months. I mean, GLP-1 agonists have been around for a long time, but I think the the big push from the media uh, in the winter, uh, in early 2023 and late 2022, a lot of people were pushing Ozempec and semaglutide and, and these different uh, uh, compounds. And the thing is, this is an injectable uh, long, basically you're overriding the bodies. It's a super physiologic level of GLP-1. And so that's why uh, people are starting to experience potentially these side effects because of receptor desensitization, such as stomach paralysis known as gastroparesis, which is not good. Now, before we continue on, friends, just want to highlight, I know a lot of people have been talking about berberine. I've been talking about berberine on this YouTube channel since 2016, really effective natural compound that helps with appetite cravings and control, possibly how berberine is working is by improving the gut hormones and the gut bacteria. So if you haven't yet tried berberine and you're having a hard time with your fasting, if you're having a hard time craving cookies, crackers, treats in the evening time, you can take two to three capsules of the berberine fasting accelerator by Myoscience. Use the code podcast to save at checkout. I'll put links below there. There's over 210 reviews. This formulation, a lot of good feedback there. Uh, People find this can be, uh, people find this to be very helpful. Um, So let's get further into GLP-1 and talk more about this. We talked about mindful eating. We talked about exercise as strategies to naturally increase GLP-1. Now I want to share with you um, some even more details about things you can do. There's L cells in your distal portion of your small intestine, and these are responsible for releasing GLP-1. And these L cells might be increased by consuming polyphenolic compounds like blueberries, like raspberries, possibly green tea and these sorts of things. So uh, it's helpful to understand that it's not just how you eat, how you exercise, uh, not binge eating or or overindulging and, and having all these cheat meals and this overriding your body's natural satiety mechanisms. Uh, the foods that you eat do impact these, these cells. And so this is where gut health uh, really comes in as well. So I just want to highlight that. But If you struggle with food cravings, particularly in the evening time or in the late afternoon time, try going for a vigorous 10 to 12 minute walk. Uh, As we just talked about, studies show that exercise can increase satiety and prevent some of these uh, emotional binges that uh, many people are susceptible to when it comes to uh, food cravings and the sort. And so exercise is a natural GLP-1 agonist, as is chewing your food and eating in a circadian-aligned window. And so what might that look like? Well, that might look like eating during the daylight hours. Uh, Many people sometimes, you know, the, the, um, you know, the sun goes down, they have a big meal, it's 11, 12, midnight, something like that. It's their last meal because they intermittent fast all day. Well, a more sustainable strategy would be to actually eat during the daylight hours. It turns out that there's a relationship between uh, leptin and GLP-1 and these appetite-sensing hormones known as the incretins. Remember, these are really important hormones. In fact, majority of the mechanism of action of bariatric surgery is actually by increasing GLP-1 and these associated hormones. It's not so much restricting how much food you can tolerate in your stomach. It is by increasing these hormones. And so, as we alluded to, uh, polyphenolic compounds in blueberries, potentially, uh, and other fruits that are of dark colors might be helpful, raspberries, uh, pomegranate, potentially, chewing your food mindfully. Uh, yeah, and mindful eating doesn't really get a, a lot of attention or airtime because it sounds kind of boring, but having you know 30 to 50 chews per swallow. And so, what does that look like? That, that looks like eating with someone you care about, having a conversation, putting the fork down, not being on your phones, uh, being mindful about that. It turns out that the vagal nerve intervention uh, intervention needs to be stimulated. You need to ha- be in a parasympathetic tone to increase the levels of these gut hormones. So, if you're eating when you're stressed, you're going to override this and have a reduction in GLP-1. And I keep highlighting GLP-1 just to reiterate, this is the synthetic pharmacologic compound that uh, Ozempec is how it's administered uh, via injection. 
And again, the downside there is you're getting a super physiologic dose of a hormone that your body naturally makes. And we get what's known as the uh, endogenous down regulation. Anytime we give an exogenous hormone, whether it's testosterone or other hormones, you naturally tend to see down regulation of the actual hormone being released. And so that's why we're focusing on uh, exercise, chewing your food mindfully, uh, and again, possibly using natural compounds such as berberine hydrochloride uh, that, that's been shown to be helpful for food cravings and the sort. So uh, what I want to do is get to some live questions. I know it's you know a different time of the day that we, we normally don't go live uh, during the middle part of the day. Just want to uh, say, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button. Let me know that you got some value uh, from this conversation. <laughs> And that was my dog being a crazy wolf here. So what we're going to do is dive into it. Okay, Jenny says, I have small fiber neuropathy. You don't want stomach paralysis. Yes, Jenny, I agree with that. My whole GI tract is in spasms 98% of the time. Huh, uh, Jenny, I would like to know if you did take Ozempic. I, I would be curious by that. Uh, Rachel says fasting helps. Yeah, fasting really helps with the emotional control over the food that you eat, which is really interesting. Uh, another question came in. What about muscle loss on Ozempic and the link? You know, I've been, uh, Rochelle, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've been really trying to look into this literature. I can't find... Uh, much data on this with regards to the type of weight that is lost. But you bring up a really good point. Uh, I think Ben Bickman has talked a lot about this, and that is that we don't really know uh, what, where the weight is coming from on the weight loss, the so-called 6% added weight loss on the clinical trials that uh, were utilized to get FDA authorization uh, for Ozempic. But I do just want to throw this on there. This is another image that we haven't yet talked about. Uh, and these are the these are the known side effects or contraindications, but uh, uh, Rochelle brings up a really good point, and that is that we don't know uh, the body composition changes when people take these different pharmacologic compounds. Is it preferentially body fat that's lost or muscle loss? Uh, they, just, they just talk about weight loss, but we don't know what kind of weight loss that is. Okay, Crash Bandit says, starting uh, a 19 to 20 hour fasting window, uh, back to what I did in my 20s because I just didn't take the time to eat. Good for you. Uh, hopefully that works uh, out as well. Okay. Shaquille says, I can't get my uh, Manjaro because everybody and their mama wants to get it. Uh, and uh, it's frustrating. So, uh, Good point here is these GOP-1 agonists have been utilized successfully to treat type 2 diabetes, and now diabetic patients are having a hard time getting their medications, which is uh, probably frustrating for you. So Shaquille, um, you might want to start looking at alternatives potentially. Uh, obviously, there's metformin. Uh, there's there's obviously a lot of natural compounds that we uh, talked about. Okay, Tiger Talk says, uh, and doesn't get paralyzed anyone's stomach. It sees idiots eating huge amounts of food while on it. Um, yeah, so eating excessive amounts of foods uh, on GLP-1 agonists. So you bring up a good point. We got to change our lifestyle. We got to change the mindless eating, emotional binge eating. Um, so if we're eating excessive amounts of food and then taking an exogenous hormone that slows down the stomach, uh, we can expect to see undigested food and, and the complications therein. So that's a really good uh, point there. Okay. What's the max amount of protein you can absorb in one sitting and... Uh, hit your daily protein requirements following time restricted feeding or OMAD. Yeah, I think, you know, in the neighborhood of, of 40 to 60 grams. Um, I know some people that do OMAD and they're having north of 150 grams a day. So, you know, Kyle, it's a it's a good question. I think everyone's a little bit different with how strong their gastrointestinal tract is, so, so to speak, in terms of uh, how much they can break down and digest. So that's a that's more of a personal question, in, in my opinion. Um, Got to try this. Try, try things out. Okay. So friends, that's it for today. Um, yeah, Mandy, uh, Mindy Pels, I would like to do a conversation with her. She seems very knowledgeable. Uh, I don't know her personally, but but yeah, that'd be a cool collaboration. So uh, friends, if you got value from this conversation, hit that like button. That just lets me know that we should do more lives like this. Hopefully you found these scientific articles interesting. I was able to find many of these articles directly on the interwebs for free. I would recommend downloading this one. Uh, and and there's uh, th this one uh, association with uh, binge eating uh, and reduced uh, GLP-1 receptor activation and expression. 
Uh, lots of good images here that you can screenshot and share with your friends and family about natural strategies to improve the activation of this critically important gastrointestinal hormone. Uh, remember, mindful eating, eating during daylight hours, uh, try to compress your feeding window, exercise when you have food cravings. These are natural ways to help to optimize this critically important gut metabolic axis. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for that like button. I appreciate you all being here and we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Have a good day now. Bye.